Welcome to the Moody's Tyronado Football Extra. Where honesty and service comes first. Serving Williamson County for over 70 years. Visit us at Moody's Tire for all your tire and automotive needs. Stop by and see us at 1600 Columbia Avenue. Well, hello everybody and welcome in to the week 11 edition of the Moody's Tire and Auto Football Extra. I'm Joe Williams along with our expert Maurice Pattinson. He's gotten good at just letting that go by. And Mo, I, I still haven't figured out what that thing is that, that's kind of beating down on us. I've been in a hole all week and it's been come out and see my shadow. Bit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that means you know six more weeks of rain or what. I hope it doesn't mean six more weeks of rain. You and me both. Right. Uh, we don't need any more rain. Next six weeks are going to be very tied up with the final regular season week and playoffs. And the final week of regular season in Williamson County is going to have a big, big effect on how those playoffs playoffs go. We'll open up with the game here. You see the, the guys from Centennial getting ready for Henry County in what some folks have called the biggest game in the school's history. I asked uh, Coach Brian Rector about that earlier this week, and he just laughed and said, I guess if somebody keeps up with that stuff, it might be. <laughs> you know, I would have thought maybe one of those games in the playoffs last year might have been, but, but you know, it's big. I mean, they're playing for a region championship uh, Friday night. And, never won one. Never won one. I'm not sure if they played for one. So, um, you know. It would be tough to argue that. I'm not sure that I would say that, but I, I couldn't argue with that status. I mean, they're playing really good football right now. Henry County comes in here playing really good football right now. They've won their last seven. I think Centennial's won six straight. So, so you're meeting, you've got two, two of the top teams, not just in this area, but probably two of the top teams in the state of Tennessee right now in 5A. Both are 8-1, and 6-0 and in, district, or in region 7 5A and uh, last week Henry County I, I really thought Brentwood had their number came back late uh, beat Brentwood 21-15 that was a great job by, by Ron Crawford and his staff going up to uh, Paris and, and being that close in that ball game and I, I'm hoping that wasn't a wake-up call for the Patriots. Well um, I don't think it was necessarily a wake-up call for them they're playing pretty good ball I think it just speaks to the job that Crawford has done with a young Brentwood team to get, bring them along to the point that they could go up there, have a fourth quarter lead in Paris against Henry County and, and fall by less than a touchdown. Speaking of getting ready to play for a regional title, that'll happen in Lewisburg when the Page Patriots go down to battle Marshall County. And that ought to be, as my old buddy, Clint Calicott used to say, that ought to be a slobber knocker. <laughs> I tell you what, um, Give yourself some time because you may be there a while. The, both these teams like to throw the ball. Um, I was looking at some stats earlier. Michael Magochi Page is quarterback. We've seen him all year. Um, 1,800 plus passing yards, 18 touchdowns, one pick. What's that tell you? That, that tells you that he, he's putting it where he wants to put it pretty much. Marshall County quarterback Ashton Posey, it's got almost 2,200 passing yards, 23 touchdowns, three picks. So both these guys are not just throwing for a lot of yards, but they're accurate with it. And, and they've got a great receiving core, both of them do. And the ball's going to be in the air a lot. Clock may not stop too much because it, it doesn't sound like there's going to be a whole lot of incomplete passes. So um, this should be a good ball game. I, I'm, I'm really excited to hear how this ball game goes for the Region 4 4A championship. And even when they throw, Page is known to run a little bit of a hurry up too. They don't, they don't, they do not tarry in their huddle. Yeah, um, but Page has been fun to watch this year. I've had a couple of opportunities to see them, and um, really like not just Magochi and those receivers, but Michael Roberts as well, the running back on offense, linebacker on defense, and he does not mind contact. So. Um, Really, really fun high school football player to watch. Again, I, I just think this is going to be a fun ball game. Another one of the games that will have some implications as we go forward into playoff time comes up over on the Ernest Rice Lane when BGA hosts FRA and what has become a traditional rivalry that's turned out to be good games. Yeah, I mean, when you've got two schools similar sizes, as close to each other as they are, FRA draws some kids from down this way. Um, it, it's a nice little robbery, and, and both of them playing pretty good football right now. should be a lot of fun. We move back to 6A, where both of our 6A six, uh, six teams have qualified for the playoffs. Heck, they're one and two. Ravenwood, number one in Region 6A. They got one more game left. They're traveling to 
Antioch. Antioch. That's Antioch. Right. Antioch. They're going to Antioch um, to close out the season. Um, kind of stubbed their toe earlier in the year against these guys, but they've really shaken that off. And 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 again, they're playing good football at the right time. Andrew Repay is is coming back from that high ankle sprain that he had a few weeks ago, and um, you know, just clicking on all cylinders offensively, which. Um, isn't necessarily what Antioch wants to hear because they're 0 and 9 coming into this ball game, so could be a long night for the Bears. Franklin, I think a bit of a surprise at number two in in the region. Uh, I think we all thought they'd be in the top four, but I don't think we thought number two. There've been some uh, underachieving squads elsewhere, and frankly, the the Rebels have just really developed uh, into a, into a very positive and and good football team. Now they've got to make. Uh, one more trip, I believe. They got to go to Lebanon on Friday night. Mm -hmm. And you know, while you talk about underachieving teams, and Franklin kind of um, had a couple of slip ups there. They lost to Overton. They lost to Ravenwood, which wasn't necessarily the big one, but that Overton loss was kind of. You would have thought that it was going to be more harmful, but again, they've they've rallied. They got a big win last week against Mount Juliet, 27-6 at home. Kind of lock things down for them as far as that number two spot. They still got to go and take care of business this weekend over at Lebanon, but I think they've done a really good job, and it will be interesting to see Matthew how they handle not Gary. having Lanham Craddock, the running back who um, sustained a knee injury in that Mount Juliet win. But Kyle, Kyle Evans really picked up the pace for him last week, and, and again, I'm, I'm just interested to see what they do at the running back spot, whether it be Matthew Burns or, or who it is that steps in there in his spot, because they really want to be run-oriented as much yep. as they can. So um, this will be a nice warm-up for them, I think, as they get ready for the playoffs. And they'll get to be at home for the first week of the playoffs, and that's a big deal when you start thinking about uh, moving on down the road and being able to advance. And, and especially when 3A matches up with region, I mean, Region 3, 6A, matches up with Region 4, which is Memphis. Memphis. So they've, they've saved themselves one three-hour bus ride anyway, and we'll see how far that takes them. That's a good point because those bus rides are, whew, there not comes fun. a point when they're not fun. Brentwood could probably tell us about. As we go back to 5A, the, the Bruins uh, headed out uh, to, or no, yeah, they got to go to Clarksville. They, you know, it's, it's sad. They took that probably three-hour bus ride to Harris last mm -hmm. week, and I know uh, they're going to go to Clarksville, and I can tell you from experience that this team, Centennial, uh, part of their group had a four-hour bus ride trying to get to Clarksville on the trip that they took. Hello, traffic in Nashville. Oof. There's no good time to do it, I mean, unless you get out of school early. So well, That ain't uh, happening. Well, my fault. I forgot. No, and it's not happening here. Yeah, I'm, I forgot. Okay. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's tough getting across Nashville that time of day. And, and you know, thanks, TWSAA. I'm, I'm, I'm sure Jeremy Qualls is mouthing about that somewhere, but we'll, we'll – anyway, let's move on. No, he's probably not mouthing. He's just keeping it to himself, and I don't think I blame him right now. All right, let's stay in 5A. Let's move down south of the county where Summit had a chance to maybe make the playoffs and ran into a bus all last week in Stewart's Creek, uh, basically eliminated from the playoff run. But – you know what? The Spartans have had a heck of a year. They've done a whole lot more than I ever dreamed they would. And I am uh, I, I'm a believer now, the next couple of years, they're going to be players. They've got one more game to get past this year. You know, the best is yet to come for that program, I think. I went down and saw that Stewart's Creek game, and they've got some nice young talent. And another year in the weight room, another year together, another year under Brian Coleman yeah. and that staff, and, and they're going to be a player in that region. So, um, you know, they picked off a couple of teams already that you probably didn't expect them to. They've got Columbia at their um, – yeah, yeah, Columbia at Summit this weekend and got a chance to finish out. And, you know, all in all, they got eliminated from the playoffs with that loss to Stewart's Creek. They've got Columbia coming to town this week. They might be better off if they win this ball game. They go into the offseason coming off of a loss to end the season. They got some momentum as opposed to going into the playoffs. Yeah. And, and because being realistic and no disrespect meant it's not like they were going to win the state championship. True. So, I mean, this gives them a chance to go into the offseason coming off of a win. And there might be some value in that. And the scary part about that bunch is they are basically all juniors, sophomores. There's a few seniors, but they are junior and sophomore dominated.
The other game that we'll look at in 5-5A, Independence looking for that perfect record, trying to go 10-0. Got to go on the road to do it to face a Laverne team that uh, may hold on to a playoff spot. But at the start of the year, Maurice, we were talking about these guys being maybe the second best team, maybe challenging. Yeah, you know, um, we thought coming in that they may be the most talented team in that region. And they've not necessarily played up to that. They've been a little inconsistent, been a little up and down. Meanwhile, this Independence team, good Lord. We went, you and I went yeah. down together and we saw their scrimmage against Franklin, their last scrimmage before the season started. And Daniel Wright was so impressive at the running back spot. And, and we both kind of agreed that was kind of the missing piece for that yeah. offense because you've got Andrew Bunch at quarterback, you've got Nate Johnson, you've got um, the Swayze kid, um, Seth Huner, at the receiver, so you knew they could throw it around, but you didn't know if people were gonna have to honor the run game as well. Well, Daniel Wright has answered that question. You better honor it. So um, this is a team that's got all the pieces to um, to be in Cookville here in about another month or so. Well, even when uh, even when Swayze, I'm sorry, when- Yeah, uh, no, well, Swayze yeah, went yeah, to yeah, quarterback. Yeah, Swayze went to quarterback with the injury. They did fine, but the group that impresses me the most down there mm. is going to be that no-name defense. Not a lot of names that we're going to shoot at you, but doggone, they have just gotten the job done. No question they have. You know, they um, they stop people, they create turnovers, and that's the other end of those 49-16s to 16s and 42-7s to 7s and that kind of thing. I mean, they're not winning shootouts. They're winning routes because they're, they're scoring – and that defense is getting the ball back for them, and they're scoring again. And, you know, lather, rinse, repeat. So <laughs> well, last week, 49-0 at half. Yeah, 42-0 uh, at I'm half sorry. last week, 49-0 yeah. at half at Columbia. Yeah. So, so they, are, they are putting up points, and, and they're not letting you score. So it's, that's it's a nice combination. Game, I mean, that's what you're supposed to do, isn't they, it? Well, they get it. They get it. <laughs> we go over uh, to our 3A group. That's Fairview, where... The Yellow Jackets just could not hang on last week. Camden comes in and takes away the regional title. Chris Hughes got his bunch. They'll still be in second place in that region, Maurice, and they'll they'll still get a, a home game to start the playoffs. But first, they got to get this last game out of the way. Yeah, you know, I think Chris, and I know how competitive he is, and I know how hard he is on those guys. They were down. 24-6 maybe at one point. Halftime, yeah. They came back, and, and the final was 32-28. So I think he's got to be pretty well pleased with what they did in the second half. Obviously not pleased with what they did in the first half. But I think you got to give Camden a little credit, too. Oh, so, yeah. um, you know, so Fairview will learn from that. And, and they've got Harpeth this week, and then they've got the playoffs, and they've got a home game the first round. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see what they do with that because they, Fairview is to the point now where the playoffs are at expectation. Yes. That, you know, that's, yeah. that's not a cause for celebration for them. And that's certainly steps in the right direction. They didn't just luck up on the playoffs. Fairview's a good program, and this is what they're supposed to do at this point. So we'll see where they go from here. Also down uh, south ways of the county, if you will, you've got uh, the Grace Christian Academy group. they got to go to Fayetteville and face uh, our old friend, Alvin Palmer. And Fayetteville, uh, second in their region right behind Columbia Academy. The Lions, yeah, they've been eliminated, but who would have thought Rusty Smith and that bunch would take a first-year group and go out and win three, four games? You know, and, and you know, kudos to them. They've oh, done yeah. a great job in their first year in 11-man football, first year in the TSSAA, and, and hopefully Coach P will take it easy on them this week. Well, we can hope. He's a good guy. He, he is a good guy. He'll, he'll, he'll treat them right. And our final game to think about this week, we really haven't got to think about because Brentwood Academy – uh, has got Macaulay at home, and, you know, you're looking for the angle here. Brentwood Academy has been so dominant all year since that first loss that it's it's hard to even think about can anybody give them a challenge. Of course, their old coach coming back, mm -hmm. maybe there's the angle. Yeah. Maybe there is the angle. It, um, I, I don't think it will be too warm a welcome yeah. for the Blue Tornado because the way Brentwood Academy has been putting up points, um, you know, we were talking about independence and, and how they score and, and stop you from scoring. It's been a lot like, like that for yeah. Brentwood Academy as well. We saw what they did to a team coming in from Florida last week, 53-6. They were Uni supposed to be really good and strong in Florida. And maybe they are. Well, maybe they are in Florida. So, you Not know, here. May, maybe maybe they are a good team in Florida. Maybe that says something about Tennessee football. I don't, or maybe just says something about Brentwood, Brentwood Academy. Academy. I yeah. don't know. But um, they're playing really well right now, and, and hopefully they can sustain that 
I, I would imagine they'll get a bye in the first round of the Division Two AA playoffs, but hopefully they can sustain that and make a run to Cookville, and we'll see what happens there. We expect, or we, we have the opportunity, I think, to, to uh, spend quite a bit of time in Cookville over a couple of weeks in December. Isn't that lovely? Oh, you got to go. <laughs> Everybody ought to go. Speaking of going, it's time for us to go. We're going to get these last games out of the way, and next week we'll have everything set up and ready for the TWSAA playoffs in both Division I and Division II. Until then, for Maurice Patton and, and a man who tries to make us look good. He does the best he can, folks, but it's, you, you, you got to work, work with. with. Yeah. <laughs> Charles Pulliam, I'm Joe Williams. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week on the Moody Tired Auto Football Extra.